Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, May 11th, 2021, regular selectmen's meeting. We have three selectmen, as, as Mark Pendergast keeps floating in and out, we haven't seen him lately, <laughs> is uh, the town manager, the town clerk. We have a special guest tonight with uh, superintendent of the schools and members of the school board. Is uh, Please stand with me and salute the flag. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. And, uh, first order is the approval of our uh, April... 27th meeting minutes. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. We have a motion. Second. And you have a second. <clears throat> is uh, no further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Uh, Mark appears to be gone again, and I will vote yes. Thank you. Um, you have no public comment. Nobody's putting any questions in or anything, right, Patty? No. no. Is, uh, we have no public hearing tonight. No reports of committees. We're zipping right through this. And that'll get us right to our feature presentation. As uh, we welcome tonight is uh, Superintendent of the MSAD 60, Audra Beauvais. How are you today, Hi. Audra? Great. Thank you for having us. Uh, oh, thank you for coming. Sure. I, you know, have been in Berwick for 20 years at the Hussey School, so this, you know, really feels familiar to me. So um, it's nice to, to be in Berwick tonight. So Denise Van Campen is with us. She's our business administrator. Susan Austin is with us and she's our assistant superintendent. Linda Corliss just joined and she's one of our board members for Berwick. Hi, Linda. Um, so I know you're zipping through your uh, meeting tonight. We won't try to hold you up. So um, I'll just- that's okay. that's okay. This is very important for us. Well, okay, we sure. We appreciate it all. Okay, great. Um, I just wanna give you a, a real brief overview on some of the goals that we used as a district as we were developing our budget and then talks about some of the driving factors uh, which led to um, the process, throughout the process, and then we'll open it up for any questions that you may have. Uh, first of all, I hope that you received the annual report in the mail. Um, it was delivered over the last couple of days, so hopefully you had an opportunity to get that and see that. Um, when we started working on our district budget, there were three particular goals that we had. Uh, the first goal was um, to work on increasing literacy across A12, which is um, a goal that we've had for a long time and will continue to have because it's so vital uh, for students and student success. The second goal that we had was social emotional learning. We know that um, during the last year, year and a half, it's been particularly challenging uh, for some of our students. So we really wanted to focus on, um, you know, continuing to build resiliency and um, goal setting and self-confidence with our students. The third goal that we had was based on our facilities. Um, I think we've done some talking at each of the towns about our building projects that are coming up. We do have a building project coming up at Hussey School um, in Lebanon and at North Berwick. So we really did have to focus some of our uh, budgetary um, money uh, on the support of those projects that are coming to referendum, hopefully um, in the fall when we do that. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, so just some driving factors for us initially, these are some big ticket items that really drove our budget. Um, last July, our voters approved four projects um, for $1.8 million with the state paying all but $700,033 which we will be paying back to the main bank bond over 10 years. Those projects include the sprinkling of the Hussey School, Hanson School in Lebanon, 
and North Berwick Elementary School. And again, those are all um, things that will help us as we look toward uh, looking at those building projects down the line. The fourth project was the continued asbestos abatement at Noble Middle School. When the projects went out to bid, they came back with a $500,000 overage. So we brought that um, information to our facilities and finance committee, which is an equivalent to a budget committee, to our building committee and to our school board. And based on the fact that um, these are safety projects that rely, you know, that we're looking at for safety purposes. And the fact that the state was so um, generous with the funds for us, all of those groups decided that it was responsible to move ahead and put that in the budget. So you will see that in our budget, um, in our site work and maintenance line. The other big part um, with facilities is $100,000. And $100,000 in that line also is for the architect and engineering for some of the fees as we look ahead to those building projects. So some other driving factors that we have is that we are going to be um, losing a curtailment or have a curtailment of $367,211 in state subsidy for fiscal year 22. Uh, at one point we had thought that she was, um, that we were going to have that hit in 21 versus 22, but it is 22. Um, not only do we take that um, loss, but we typically get a little more than that. So really, even though right now it's 367,211, it would have been a little more than that had we been able to receive it. So we've got that loss um, that we're dealing with as well. And we do have some staffing positions. Uh, we have a kindergarten teacher in North Berwick based on enrollment, we needed to add kindergarten. And we have a fourth grade teacher up for uh, the Knowlton School. Again, that is due to enrollment. We currently have six sections of third grade going into five sections of fourth grade at Knowlton School. And we need to keep numbers around 19 or 20 to 21 per classroom. Uh, so that is um, that position will address that piece. We found that we did have some kindergarten students that were going to be entering kindergarten this year that um, held for next year. So our kindergarten numbers are looking a little higher in North Berwick than typical. And at Hussey, they're coming in a little higher as well, but we still have uh, the wiggle room with the sections that we have at Hussey so that we don't, that we're in very good shape for Hussey with kindergarten. We also put in for a permanent building substitute for special education. It's really difficult to find subs in general, but to have substitute teachers that are trained and able to work um, in some of our more specialized programs has been very, very hard. And we hope that by putting in a permanent sub for that, we will be able to really get some good training under our belts for those um, that position and have that person be able to go to any of our programs K to 12 and be able to um, be very helpful and work through students IEP plans and support the teachers in the learning. We added a part time bookkeeper to help address some of the uh, massive work that's going to be coming in as far as um, the building projects, but also we have received some state money this year in grants. Um, to help us offset some of the massive costs that it has been to deal with PPE and different things as a result of COVID. And that's a massive amount of paperwork in of itself as well. So that part-time bookkeeper will help us with that. We also, um, if you look through the budget, you'll see um, we did, we did add in 1.5 teachers back into our regular budget that were previously grant funded for the multiple pathways program at the high school. So they're not new positions per se, their funding just moved back into our budget. Um, and then we had a couple, just a few changes to current positions. We have a literacy coach at Hussey School and we've increased that a day per week. So that will be three days per week. And then we added um, for the community engagement coordinator, we added 10 additional hours to that schedule per week. And that is I, um, solely to deal with attendance and truancy issues. Um, we've always had trouble with you know, truancy and 
Uh, attendance issues are really hard to work through. And while our buildings are doing a great job with that, um, it takes a lot of time. So we have somebody who's going to increase some of their work time to help kind of offset that for our schools. Um, so a few, just a few other things. Um, our revenue, our overall revenue is up $40,000 from fiscal year 21. Um, but what you're gonna see is that we will move some of our fund balance that we have currently over to our budget to um, help reduce the impact to the taxpayers um, in light of the state subsidy loss that we're having. Um, so let's see what else. Our just this is of note, our fixed costs, which are salaries, wages, and benefits, that uh, makes up 85% of our entire budget. Um, so just to kind of summarize, that all puts an increase to local taxes 4 point to 4.18%. So that is my, my brief overview for you. And I'm sure you will likely have questions. So we, we're here to open it up and answer anything you may have. All right, thank you, Audra. That's very, very uh, informative. Is uh, any questions for Audra from the board? Uh, I have a question. I don't have the numbers for years past in front of me. How does that um, increase compare to the last few years? Is that about the same or a lot more? I can take that one. I know that um, last year, uh, the increase to taxpayers was 3.4%. Um, I can look up a couple more years if you just give me a moment. Any any other questions of Audra? I'll, I'll, I'll start, Audra. Is, um, is the curtailment from the state is uh why are we why are we suffering that curtailment? Is that just a state funding formula changes? Uh, it is. It's a loss that every school district is facing. The amount varies school district to school district based on your enrollment and some other you know how much you receive how much you typically receive under the formula as well. But it's a sweeping um, curtailment for districts. Is um. It, you know, you mentioned the the pandemic problems. I, I know my my two grandsons are in the district, and uh, it's been quite quite a quite a ride for everybody. I know that. Yes. Um, is um, is one of the, one of the things now that classes that the vaccines are coming out and uh, classes will be getting back and going and everything is one of the things we hear about is um, buses and drivers. Is how are we how are we set with that? Well, I, I want to first start off by saying our goal for next year is to, to get everybody back full time K-12. So that is really what our administrative team and everybody has working toward for next year as far as planning purposes. Right now, we have um, a good system with our, our transportation office. Our buses are in great shape and we have enough drivers. There was one route that was consolidated in Berwick um, last year and it was managed very well. So we don't anticipate having to put that back on, thus needing another driver for that. Uh, but I will say to you that it is very, very challenging finding bus drivers and substitute bus drivers. Uh, that remains um, a difficult task, um, but we are in very good shape. We have had to really limit the amount of students on the bus this year due to the requirements, but moving ahead in the fall, we'll be able to have more seating on the bus, more students attending um, and being transported by our buses. So, so you don't see a big problem in the future then? We don't. And you know, typically I think you're all familiar, I, you may all be familiar with Blackberry Hill Road at dismissal and arrival time. So you know, likely that, that we have a, many, many families that pick up students and drop off students. And that, that's true for every elementary school. So we really can manage, um, you know, our student, you know, students that will need to take the bus. Right. Anybody else have any other questions? We have, we have some more information I can see. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, uh, so I just wanted to get back to Selectman Cobb. Uh, fiscal year 19, 
was 5.63% to taxpayers. Fiscal year 20 was 4.8%. Fiscal year 21 was 3.4%. And our proposed is 418 so right thank you very much. Yep. So um it though know, Audrey, you, you talked about, you know, and we're familiar with that in our in, in the town budget is uh the contract wages and how you know uh the, the raises and things drive a lot of your budget. Is uh when is one of the major contracts up for negotiation again? Sure. So the Teachers Association, which is our largest, right. um, is just um, voting on their contract. So um, those our budget reflects the figures for that sa those salary changes. Um, our administrative contracts were also due this year, and that has been successfully um, approved by that association. Uh, next year, we have our support staff contract and the following year i believe it's our um last contract which is the union i forgot the official title of that contract um so really this this year was the big one yeah how, how, how long is the how long is the teacher's contract for the teacher's contract so last year was actually last year was their their negotiating year and because of right. the um pandemic they stopped so they only ex they extended theirs out a year so typically it's three years they um are voting on a two-year contract right the administrators is a three-year contract so that that will put them on different cycles which is good which is a good right. oh yeah we understand that too. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so is um is i you know, is something that, you know, we as the town here, you know, the, the, the possibilities of federal monies coming. Is, yes. Um, is, you know, do you have any, you know, inkling, any clues, any ideas of uh, how much and when that might be coming that way? Uh, so just so you're aware, we have had several um, come in already for us right. over the course of this school year. And what they have helped us do is really helped us open with PPE. You know, we had to purchase a lot of PPE uh, for students, for staff. Um, we, as part of our hybrid plan, needed to handle and purchase a lot of technology, not just for the students, but for classrooms. We had to do a lot of hardware so that students could um, log into a class going in real time at the high school. So that addressed the high school and the middle school classes. And we also had to hire some teachers for complete remote work. Right. We had some staff that were able to do that, um, but we also had to hire a few, you know, some positions for that. So the money that we've received thus far has gone to those kinds of um, infrastructure and personnel. The money that we will be getting um, is going to be substantial as well. And that is really being allocated in certain amounts, like they're going to say 20% needs to go to educational recovery, uh, emphasis needs to go continuing on ventilation and air quality, um, anything that will, will help with those types of things. So while we do get the money, it is pretty, um, you know, the path is pretty forged about what they would like us to spend it right. on. But I will let you know that as we're going through it, we're certainly looking at things that will better our schools so that we can not have them reflected in budgets in the near future. For example, like we're looking at windows and putting in windows in the buildings. Uh, so that will not only be an upgrade for ventilation and screen purposes, but it will also help us not have to have those in our school budgets moving ahead. Right. So we're definitely looking at being responsible to our towns for that. Oh, good. Um, any questions from the selectmen at all? No, if not, I, I just have one more, and this is more, more of, uh, you know, is I, I, I know that the, the school nutrition program has you no know, seen a huge increase in what they've been doing. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from all reports I've had that it's been a great success, you know, throughout all the communities. So is, I'd just like to, you know, you know, recognize them also nice. so they're fulfilling a big need for the communities now so great so. that's great thank you for that information um, um if there are no other questions from the selectmen mr manager you have any questions no. of anything 
Well, I appreciate it. Is uh, we we appreciate all the information we can get, and uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. We'll move on to our regularly scheduled meeting. Um, unfinished business. We have none. Is town manager's report. I have several things. Um, we have been talking about solar farms and energy uh, contracts. Um, we've been solicited by a number of different companies. Um, and I know the board members wanted to do business in Berwick. We do have a company in Berwick. Um, called Berwick Solar. Uh, and we've been talking back and forth with them and uh, they've offered us a 15% uh, rate, which is very, very competitive. Uh, they're here in Berwick. Um, they, it's a 20 year contract, but at the six year, we have an option uh, to give them a 120 day notice and we can decide to get out of the contract if we so desire. Um, they're on the grid. This was one thing that um, a lot of the company's revision and I talked about is it and very helpful that um, many farms are popping up all over the state, but not everybody is getting on the uh, CMP grid. So but this company is already on the grid and tomorrow uh, is the closing day. So I need to be, uh, just let you know that we're, we're going to agree to go, go with them. Uh, Lisa Vargas, myself, uh, James, and uh, Cole uh, out of the finance office have been sitting in on this and doing our homework, and we think this is a be a good deal. We'll, we'll get a 15% saving or credit, as they call it, on our bill, and um, along with that, and the LEDs, we're we're seeing a good amount of savings on our electric bill coming. So we've see, already seen it on the LEDs. Um, our next meeting, we'll have, I think you have the final copy of the, uh, per, the PTO uh, changes that we're making, and we've had quite a few meetings with stat and department heads, and finally have a document that we think will work. Uh, so uh, next meeting, when you get a chance to review that, we'll have you voted in in uh, May. Um, uh, Municipal Resources, Inc. has forwarded me today I, I sent it to you all, a copy of what the ad for the new manager will look like, um, and also uh, the profile that they put together. Um, I thought it was outstanding, and I, I hope you all had a chance to contribute to it. I know some of the staff has contributed to it, um, and I, I think it's one of the better uh, searches I've seen for documents coming out. Um, Bibber, if you haven't noticed, they... Uh, Hydro wash the uh, monument and also the um, the drinking trough, horse trough out there. Um, they did that was a uh, donation they made to us, um, and which we thank them very much. I want to make sure we recognize them as contributing that. Um, I got a uh, quote from um, or an estimate on the uh, Diamond Hill Bridge. Um, if we were to build it, um, they. Rough estimate was uh, I originally had been told six hundred thousand, not by them, by somebody else. Uh, their quote was around seven hundred thousand, um, and, and every year we wait, it will probably go up to eight hundred thousand. So um, we're still trying to squeeze money if we can find it out of the uh, state and federal. Uh, but uh, infrastructure project money hasn't come out of Washington yet, so we're. Still hopeful for that, and there's quite a few towns looking for funding. Um, otherwise, that's all I have. Any questions for Steve? Guess not. Good. Is, um, all right, I have no communications. That brings us to our uh, accounts payable. We have a payroll warrant, number 69, for May 6, 2021, for the amount of $73,302.10. We have a accounts payable warrant, number 71, for May 11th of 2021, for the amount of $942,133.17. 
And we have a payroll warrant number 70 for May 13th, 2021 for the amount of $70,638.75. As I'll make a motion, we pay the bills. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. And Mark, are you there? We missed Mark again. I will go yes. So it's 4-0. <laughs> um, under new business, we have polling hours, set the polling hours for our June 8th town meeting election. The, the <clears throat> recommend the town clerk recommends 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have, I moved. we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. As I go through the roll, is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yeah. Ed? And myself is yes. And to close customer service on June 8th, 2021. And I think I saw Ed say, so moved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. I'm getting good at reading lips here. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> um, I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. And myself is a yes. And then we have the reschedule on June 8th, 2021 Board of Selectmen meeting because it conflicts with the town election. Um, we shouldn't have much on that. There week. shouldn't be much on the agenda. You can, so we can go with just one meeting that week, that month, do you think? Uh, well, you still need to get in and sign in yeah, the warrants. Can, right. But that's it. But we you know. I, uh, Patty, what do you think? We don't have. Hello, Patty. <laughs> there you can't go, read my lips. Um, <laughs> yeah, I well, we we shouldn't have a lot on that. That we could have it on Wednesday the ninth. Yeah, It'd just be a quick one to approve the warrants. Is yeah. we can move it to a Wednesday. Is uh, if we need it. Any comments from the rest of the selectmen about moving it to the Wednesday the day after? You can swear in the new electmen then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's we, we can it, make them come in. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult because you'll have two new officials. Yeah. Yeah. Is uh you, will you be able to come in on that Wednesday, Noah? Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So is um we don't need to have an official vote on that, do we? Um, yeah, just so I can put it in the minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. you do. You do. <laughs> Is, I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Is all right. I'll go through the. I'll Can go just through. keep smiling. Jeez. Is, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. Thank you. So then we have a quick claim deed, and this is for 35 Sullivan Street, which is the Blue Sort Building. And we thought we all signed this last time around, but it uh, didn't work out, so we have to go through it again. Um, and so it's basically the same quick claim deed to you know turn over the Blue Sort Building to Mark Cahaya. Um, and Patty would like us to uh, have a official vote on that. Just so she can put it in the record. Do we have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. And myself is yes. Just to bring you up to date, we've been waiting on that. Plus, the we're waiting on the... Uh, Certificate of completion from a DEP. Otherwise, all of the documentation is ready. And once we have those in place, uh, we'll do the closing. So it'd be good to have that off our plate. Yes, it will. Um, we have no more, no abatements, no second public comment. We have no executive session. 
Anybody have any other business or non-agenda items? Yeah, um, Steve, this might be a question for you. I had a, uh, a resident ask me if there was any plan to do any crack sealing on Durant Road this year, if that's on the on the radar. Oh, we do. Um, crack sealing is always on the radar. Um, we did quite a bit last year, and I'm hoping that we'll get to that this year. Um, it's hard to find. Uh, we had somebody new last year. He did a great job. So, yes, I'll make sure it's on the list. I'll have to double check it. But um, Durant Road is, we can definitely do that. We have to go through. Robert usually does an evaluation of the roads that we're trying to keep from falling apart. And um, I, that is one of them that's in fairly decent shape. And I don't want it to get any worse. So, I'll put it on my list for sure and talk to Jody, make sure he has it. Um, Thank you. Yep. Anything else? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. In the second. Second. And all those in favor, say aye. 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 And goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Good night. Next, you can. See you Your tomorrow. service, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>